Hello. Kritika, I'm live now, but you have yes. to unmute. Yes, you're, mu you're unmuted. Yes, okay. we're live now. Okay. Thank you, Chika. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am, we're online now okay. and we can uh, start. Thank you. Oh, then it's all right. Yes, ma'am, we can begin. All right. Good evening to everybody here in India. Good morning to those around the world. Poet, short story writer, novelist, chair of juries of international literary awards. Keiki Daruwala has been for decades. Master storyteller, much awarded carries on his engagement with the past and our contemporary world. A very warm welcome, dear Keki, a writer whose passion to give voice to history and our present times. I hand over to you to start our session. Good evening. Welcome to everybody. I'll I've been asked to start with some poems on fire altar. Uh, the manuscript lay with me from 1992 to 2012 or something. And then I decided to publish it. There was a very big, uh, uh, very big conference in Bombay of the Zoroastrian. And well, I'll, I'll, I'll read, uh, these are mostly sonnets. I'll read two or three and uh, one more from Fire Altar, if you don't mind. Yes. Here we go. I went to Pasargade, the tomb of Cyrus. Uh, that's the tomb. And uh, it's, uh, there's nothing but silence there and landscape. And I wrote the I wrote the sonnets much later, of course, uh, when I came back home. Uh, I don't dissemble ever that I uh, wrote at the spur of the moment. <laughs> Dawn, the ground is not crisscrossed by water channels now. There is no thicket of saplings around the tomb, though across the road. A thin-stemmed poplar grove flames in autumnal fires. There are no mosque domes, no bazaar, no kasba, just one vast plain and asleep on the skyline. Python coils that sprawl, the low detritus of the Zagros range. It is difficult to conjure up an entrance hall from the bull's severed legs, which you cannot find, or let to peers dictate a profound perspective, a colonnade etched only on the mind. To make a skeleton out of some bone splinter, an imperial precinct out of fluting columns, an ice age, out of one solitary winter. I'll read another. Belief is not easy here, never is. One hears the palace was a well-lit oblong, exquisitely proportioned, white limestone capitals rose from black plinths like a song. Walls finished in stucco, you can conjure up 
but not their painting lapis lazuli blue or turquoise green. Their fade outs disorient. History fades when the signposts are so few. Before I think of paint, I must think of walls. Time crumbling, history fraying into mythos, while no mirror, no echo answers from the halls. Emptiness, space, I face a wall at last. I'm no alchemist to make the great crossing from the dross print to the gold dust past. One more sonnet, two more sonnets, sorry. One should have come here at sundown when the amber settles quietly on the Kodak room and the colors of silence sweep the plains of Murghab like those mineral colored waterfall, waterfowl that home in from salt inlets of the Gulf to the river here. Over wrinkled waters, dusk fires would have blazed. All mirror fires burned twice. Gold light, gold leaf turned to darkening damp at the crinkled edge of days. Tranquility, stillness, quiet, shadow tones and edges too subtle for the eye. The touch of light on water is not the touch of light on stone. The poplar grove flames. Each leaf, it would seem, has a bronzed side to its face. Not a sound to stain this excess of quiet, excess of peace, excess of dream. And the last sonnet from this sequence. Uh, when you write sonnets, one leads to another. You get another idea and you yeah. put it aside till you finish the sonnet you are working on and then you get to the next. Okay. And this is the last where they bring Cyrus to the... Uh, he's brought dead uh, from one of his wars. The words were ascetic for they were yours. The offerings were the courts. Gems, robes of gold, sorry, robes of old, death, mm -hmm. sensually abstemious, bone dominated, reclining on a couch with legs of gold. The Magi guardhouse came up nearby, packed with nasal hymns for the soul's good. To keep the fires going, a river of brown shoulders carried frankincense and logs of fragrant wood. And prayers smoked upwards, profoundly intoned by muffled, half-masked mobbids, who now and then, when flame turned ember, lapsed into a drone. Your words lay simple on the limestone face. Here I lie, Cyrus, King of the Persians, stranger, don't grudge me these few feet of space. And one more poem. Uh, this was when Croesus, his sister had married the king of the Medes, Estiages, and the man who Cyrus had defeated. And he was the king of Lydia. And he sent to the Delphi Oracle huge amounts of gold. There were 117 ingots of gold. I've mentioned that, all those in my introduction to the book. Uh, there was a vase of which weighed 500 pounds, all in gold. And the bowls were even heavier than the 500 pound vase. Uh, uh, and they, he sent a big uh, entourage to Delphi. And this is the poem on what happened. The boat to Delphi. 
the Lydians as they beach their boat are greeted by a squall of gulls. They look for signs, the sky is dull. The wind drops as they disembark. A lonely buzzard overhead circles the sky in lazy arcs. The priestess spies him from a yard and feels the shadow on her back, slow, circular, and nimbus black. A scrabbling goat, a pebble rolls. She sees the angle of descent, the dust it kicks up as it falls, and knows who's here, breathes a whiff of coastal salt and coastal air, tidies her skirt, straightens her hair, awaits the Lydians as they come to reverently wait upon the Pythia's delirium. All the oracles came from through a delirium. They pass a house, a mother darts to grab her infant as it cries. A snot-nosed babe, a crawl with flies. A goat strains at the rope at last, a clearing, a froth of flowers on a wave of grass. They reach the Delphic cave fatigued. The gifts are laid out one by one, a trickle thick of Precious stone illuminates a silver tray. Carved ivory, salvers of gold, vases urn and amphorae. The envoy speaks. Now that the Medes have fallen, Chaldea isn't far. We need someone to read the stars. Apollo, Croesus must conspire to obliterate the Persian hoods. The Magi and their cult of fire. Should he go to war? That's the big question. Should he go to war? Pythia, who felt beneath her feet, the tides of coming events beat, and scrimmage in the shingle sits on the tripod, throws back her head, closes her eyes, awaits her fits. The sacred bay leaf she has chewed, the sacred waters she has drunk. The vapors rise, the fevers come. She gyrates, contorts her frame. A voice that's reedier than hers escapes her like a hissing flame. The stars are bright, the text is clear. Go back, old man, and tell your sire if he attacks. A great empire will crumble. Look to your sides for Greek allies and forge your links. Her hissing suddenly subsides. And when he lost the battle to yeah. Cyrus, he asked the oracle, well, you told me, you led me up the wrong path. And the oracle said, when we told you that an empire would fall, did you ask us which empire? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. I'm done with fire altar. Fire altar. Keki, you mentioned three phrases that have just stuck in my mind right now. History fades, time crumbles, and you spoke of the colonnade of the mind. Yes, yes. Because there are no colonnades there in Pasargade. There are no walls. There's hardly any remnant of the palaces that were there. So what stays on in your mind, Keki? I'm Sorry? What stays on in your mind? You said you wrote the sonnets not spontaneously at that place, but after you came back. Well, one, one, okay, one, sits, down, one sits down with history, with fable, right, right. And, and writes, and writes. And then you write. I'm thinking of your portrayal of Juna Gar. Yes. in Ancestral Affairs, yes. I am still shaking with reading that section, the way you got the material, the way you got the linguistic uh, aspects of each community as they speak, the Boxwalas, the Parsi lawyer, the Hindu, the Muslim, what gave you that sensitivity where you're mentioning films of the time, theater of the time, songs of the time, 
cultural lifestyles of that time pre-partition junagar you see you see you if you are writing and writing fiction and especially of the past 40 years back yes. 50 yes. years back 60 yes. years back i was yes. in junagar from 1945 as a child to oh. 1948 when my father mm. was the tutor and guardian to the prince here in this sort of right yes. he's sitting in the middle and my elder yes. brother Hampton is on the right and i'm with yes. my with my father and that's the staff in the in the house i can name all of them ibrahim omar you can name all of them uh, you know so i can so uh, the junagad hindustani was very different from even the gujarat hindustani uh, Nariel, uh, Nariel was called a trofa there, you know. So those words have stuck with me. Uh, and if you have to be a writer, you have to be observant, whether it is as far as sound is concerned or whether visually. So here I we are in 1945 or 1946 at the uh, at the most with that picture there. I hope. People can see the picture. I hope they do. Yes, sir. People can see the picture. Okay. Fair enough. We can go to the next. Yeah, that's my... Uh, oh, that's the... Uh, you know, can we switch back to the previous one first? Yes, that's my... Uh, that's my novel. And that's... My grandmother with her two sons. The one standing is my father, uh, Naswan, and uh, his elder brother. He was older than uh, 13 years older than my father. And uh, this photograph would be 100 years old. It's a very big photograph lying with me. And my father, because my father went to England in 1914 and returned in 21. And he got married in 25, 1925. And so far, he has not got married. So this photograph is taken between 1921 and 1925. Can we switch to the next? Yeah, that's the uh, with Gita Hariharan, uh, the, um, at the International uh, Center at Goa. And uh, I read, and she was uh, gracious enough to chair the chair the meeting at the Goa festival. Thank you, Geta. We have been old friends since then. Yes, and that is uh, another book. Oh, it's the same book. And Vrinda Nabar, who wrote the first essay on me. I, I remember that. Anyone ever writing an essay on me? That was Vrinda Nabar. And uh, there's Ranjit Poskote. Uh, Vrinda Nabar was the head of the English department in uh, the Bombay University once upon a time. Uh, very erudite uh, scholar. Uh, that's the family. And we move on. Yeah, that's my mother and my father with uh, Faradun, uh, who was uh, 10 years older than me, born in 1927. And that's me with my dad. Yes, that's the family with uh, my cousin, who is 25, who was 25 years older than me, Nargish. And that's my granddaughter, and that's my brother, Tempton, and his wife, my sister-in-law, Alu. Tempton is gone, but Alu is very much with us. Thank God. Yeah, at, the, <laughs> at our great brownings in London, it's our silver wedding. Quiet. But we had a few friends over there who Kim. Ah, yes, uh, that's the old blacksmith shop, marriage room. 
and when I went to Scotland, we drove to Scotland, uh, and that's those are my two daughters, Anaita Rugzen with my wife Khurshid, or Khurshid rather. Yes, move. Yeah, these are that is a Mont Blanc, I believe, and uh, I don't know where we are crossing the ferry here. I, I have no idea where we were going. That's my yes. We had a friend Ruchika. She's a joint secretary now with the Steel, I believe, and uh, the family. Yes, with my granddaughter Sanaya and the other granddaughter is uh, Freyana. Uh, that's the third ceremony. Oh, sorry, can we go back? I uh, forgot to uh, introduce my... Yeah, that is, that is my son-in-law Armin and we... Uh, yes, I, I don't know where we are. I have no idea. It must be our travels. Yes, next. That's the Navjot, the thread ceremony of yes. my yes. granddaughter Nainas. Uh -huh. And the father and the mother are right here. Oh, I'm with my sunglasses, and that's uh, Parveen and Cyrus. <laughs> Old friends and also some days Vevan, as we say in Gujarati. And okay. that I, I, I'm playing at the Blenheim uh, Castle. I captained the, uh, the Commonwealth against the Foreign Office. Yeah, that's my 1958 photograph of me in my police uniform. And that's my commandant, G.K. Handu, IG, IGP. Uh, he was handsome as Stuart Granger or anyone else. <laughs> Six foot tall and very handsome. And uh, uh, I didn't have a flash, so somebody had a flash, and I at that same second I flashed this. That's Vijay Karan. <laughs> he became police commissioner here. That is Binder. That is Jain uh, and Subramaniam, and of course Sita Raman, who passed away long back. And that's the commandant, Mr. Handu. I am through a Zoom session. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Photos now. Oh, there, yes, that's with the Queen when we, Queen Elizabeth, yes. we were from f five continents and we were uh, presented to the Queen mm -hmm. at the uh, at the Commonwealth something, okay. and I got it for this particular. Uh, book and the uh, the painting or the drawing is by Mickey Patel. If you, if anyone remembers him, a very fine artist mm -hmm. and an uh, advertisement uh, honcho at one time. <laughs> yeah, at the Sahitya Academy, Thank that's you, and that's the family, the two daughters mm -hmm. and my wife. Oh, that's the medal with Rajiv Gandhi. He looks very handsome, I find. <laughs> this is 1985, the Valmiki festival. There was that gas tragedy in Bhopal, and oh. the, uh, the literary festival had to be shifted to Delhi. 
this is the MP, uh, is a very fine poet on the left. And the, the, the other is Dilip Javeri. Dilip Javeri. Mm -hmm. Ah, with Kushwan yes, Singh. Kushwan Singh, you wanted to talk yes, about that. I had my reading at the IIC. Yes. And I had met him when he was when I was uh, additional SP in Agra, 1962 or 63. And he came and my SSP was not there. So I went and met him. So he asked me, what do you write? I said, how do you know I write anything? He said, you wouldn't have come to meet me if you didn't write. And then he told me he was my father's pupil. My father taught him in government college. Okay. And, uh, uh, he was very supportive of me uh, in his columns, in his columns. And we played tennis at adjacent <laughs> tennis courts in the Delhi Gymkhana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Mulk Raj Anand. Yes, that is yeah. with Mulk Raj Anand. Mulk Raj Anand, yes. I don't know who the other people are with him, but this is at the... Pune University or Pune University. Uh, he looks okay. very forbidding here. <laughs> we had a very good thing there. This is in the 91, 92, something, 1991, 92. Yeah, that is with Otto Orban. He translated. Oh, he's okay. a very. He's passed away, I believe, but he's a very fine. He was a very fine Hungarian poet, and he translated uh, half a dozen poems of mine uh, in one of their uh, best uh, literary journals. Otto Orban. Mm -hmm. uh, that is with Menakshi mm -hmm. Mukherjee. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Sri Swami. And that is mm -hmm. Keki Dada Boy. Keki mm -hmm. Dada Boy was in the 57 batch, 19, one year senior to me. And my deputy commandant, Mr. Stracy, kept on referring to me as Dada Boy, Dada Boy. <laughs> he, he couldn't get the Daru Wala name. <laughs> and that is uh, Minakji Mukherjee. Yes. And uh, Sridhar Swami is one of the finest poets in the country. Mm -hmm. She's very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is with Raymond Schneider, yeah. and he wanted to publish my poems, uh, to translate my poems, and I never sent them to him. Mm -hmm. How stupid of me. He is, he's, from <laughs> German. he's from Germany. But I've been very careless with, uh, what shall we say, uh, advertising oneself. <laughs> that is at Erlangen. Erlangen mm -hmm. is a you know, huge, you know, town, and uh, it has been left exactly as it was a uh, hundred years, uh, uh, more than a hundred years back. Oh. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful place, Erlangen in Germany in 1989, and in 88, uh, Wole Schoenker came. What a oh. shame. I, oh. I miss the big guys. <laughs> Always. Yeah, that is a uh, that is Paul who was just passed away to our sorrow. He oh. was the head of our poetry society in Delhi, yeah. and there is Mrs. Uh, Kusum Ansel yeah. and uh, Jatin Das and J P Das. Yeah. J P Das has gone back to Odisha, yeah. uh, and, and there is Albert <laughs> come here and Albert <laughs> come you <to> there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eunice D'Souza is in a red oh, Lakshmi right. Kanan is in the grey and oh. GGP Prasad uh, mm. I, I forget, forget the ladies uh, the lady on the left mm. 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 I don't even know where it was and where I spoke mm. and where they were mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, with uh, Namita mm-hmm. Gokhale, who heads the... Well, the, she has many other qualifications apart from heading the um, Jaipur Literary yeah, Festival. Yeah. She's a very fine mm-hmm. novelist. Mm-hmm. And I first got in touch with her, hardly touch with her, only her book, Paro. And I reviewed it in the Hindustan Times. The others were calling it obscene or something. And I backed the book. It is a very fine book. And she's a very fine writer. Yeah, shall we move? Hmm. Shift. Hmm. Ah, there with Janta Mahapatra. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, uh, there are other boys, and that is uh, Makaran Paranchpe leaning across. Now he heads the IIAS in Shimla. Sudip Sen is there, and where am I? This is Kerala festival Kerala with Kerala. Sabita. Uh, yes, uh, with Samit Sabita. Uh, we had a very good session at the Kerala festival last year. Uh, that is, uh, yes, we read it Dehradun last year. Uh-huh. Skote, uh, me and uh, uh, Smita Agarwal, uh, uh-huh. she's a very good writer, very good poet, and she uh, is the head of the department in Allahabad University. Uh, she teaches English. Oh, Indo-American no, friendship no. Award. No. Uh, That's uh, Guru, Gurudev Tagore. Guru Tagore. Yes. And you, Maharaja Karan Singh is there. Yes. Uh, he's going to speak on him. I, no. I'm sure I never spoke on Rabindranath Tagore. So my father was a great fan of his and went to Shanti Niketan for a while. That's me at Struga. Struga is in Macedonia and the gentleman with the beard is Ritsos, Yanis Ritsos, great revolutionary and a very, very fine poet in Greek. And people are surprised that he missed the Nobel. Katie, Nobel. Talking, talking about the Nobel, we walked down memory lane with all these authors whom you met. Yes. Were you influenced by any one of them? Ritsos, or... yes. Yes, Ritsos, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, otherwise, I normally <laughs> stayed away from influences. For instance, okay. I, I wouldn't read T.S. Eliot for years and years because uh-huh. T.S. Eliot has, has such a hold on you that uh-huh. he, especially Indian writers. Oh, yes. So I, I avoided him. I didn't. Uh, even his prose I bought last year. Okay. Uh, I stayed away from him. I but want talk- to be be myself. Okay. Talking of Indian writers, I was reading an interview by Jeffrey Archer today, talking about how popular he is with Indians, how he went for a literary festival and couldn't get over the numbers that were thronging and that had read him. And yeah. he made a statement that I was very uh, quite, uh, quite uh, stunned by. He said, I wish the Nobel Prize had been given to R.K. Narayan. Yes, <laughs> yes. guide, Swami and friends, Malgudi days. Is it a re- rediscovery of Indian writers now on the world stage? I'm thinking of the number of literary festivals we have. So however much my our generation will say, younger generation doesn't read. Look at the crowds of, by non-academics in yes. literary festivals. The last, absolutely. The last 20 years, the, the festivals have just flowered. Just yes. flowered. Yes. And there are now over 100 festivals in India. Absolutely. Uh, so, 
uh, uh, the time when we were writing, there was nothing. There was yes. nothing. Yes. You just yes. looked over to uh, uh, to something in the Illustrated Weekly, you know, <laughs> or in the Times of India, and yes. that was it. That was it, and nothing else. Yes, and now there is writing available. We've seen literary festivals, not only Jaipur, not only Delhi, Dhaka. I went to Kathmandu to Nepal and yes. uh, 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 Dhaka, Calcutta. The numbers who are wanting to meet writers, to read. And again, as I said, I'm not talking students in college. I'm not talking scholars. I'm not talking intellectuals. Just the general public wanting more and more and more. What would you yes. say about that? Uh, well, uh, nothing like it. Of course, it. Uh, a lot of these festivals also have second-rate writings. Uh, let, let's be <laughs> let's be uh, frank. But mm. uh, it is a great Philip and a great and an encouragement. I mean, mm -hmm. I wrote my first book of, uh, under Orion in 1970. It was published, so it's 50 mm -hmm. years. And just yeah. because of a letter from Professor P. Lal. And P. Lal said, oh. I want to publish your poems. I've read you in the Illustrated Weekly. Oh. So these are the things that encourage you. Oh, and I sat down for a year and a half when I wrote that book. Right. It's Writers' already. Workshop P. Lal in Calcutta. Yes. yes. The yes. Writers' Workshop. Writers' Workshop, yes. Imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even now, I got a letter from uh, email from um, Nishi Chavla and Sachi yes, yes. coming out with a uh, anthology, and I yes. wrote my Black Death sonnets. I'm I'm very yes. fond of my what I've written this year, and I'm okay. looking forward, and I'm looking forward to my next poetry uh, enterprise. Would you like to share that, what you've written under lockdown? Because Nishi Tawla is putting that yes, together. Yes, Writers yes, writing yes, during lockdown. Read, you know, you had time to read. I read uh, Dante and his uh, oh. Inferno. And oh. I took off uh, from the uh, from Canto 10. Oh. So many things. I'm looking forward to that book. And I think it's going to be my better one or rather the best i've written oh okay yes okay yes you write review articles you write critical articles you write for the newspaper absolutely Very critical. admirable admirable your passion for life the past the present and looking forward to the future would you like to yes. read from your latest book uh, from from what you my have it, okay. you want to say. I I one one second yes it's here uh, this is a book called uh, well the story is is an entry it is on the emergency but uh, we always have emergencies and. Uh, much of what is transpiring today is uh, is also, in a way, reminiscent of uh, uh, a much lesser extent uh, than the emergency. Of course, the emergency was some was hellish. I mean, for no rhyme or reason, just to keep a seat, seat uh, she clamped it. Uh, Indira Gandhi clamped it on the on the country. Uh, otherwise, she would have gone down as a as a as a very great uh, political figure. She helped in the liberation of uh, Bangladesh, mm. defeating uh, and with Manik Shah the uh, the Pakistanis, uh, uh, almost a lack of uh, prisoners and. Uh, uh, all the rest. So I, I don't know. I coming home. Yes. So there is a. Uh, before I read, I I haven't marked my the pages in this one. 
serving, swerving to solitude. It's a, it's a sort of a saga. This family from UP goes to Canada in 1900. And uh, that's the story of the mother. And the mother leaves a journal. And uh, she, uh, the Komagata Maru, where, they, where her husband uh, agitates, then they are moved out to uh, Mexico because uh, USA hardly wants them. And uh, she gets in touch with M. N. Roy. People have forgotten M. N. Roy, uh, that oh. one of the greatest uh, sons of yeah. India of the previous century. And uh, she becomes his secretary. And then M. N. Roy goes off to, she's almost, uh, I, I'm hinting at some sort of calf love or the shish to, shisha to the guru. And uh, there's a lot of talk on M. N. Roy. She leaves a journal and this girl, uh, she uh, fights with her. Uh, she has eventually a fight with her husband who is a deputy secretary and a director in the uh, PMO during Mrs. Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And half the story is based in Lucknow because she wants, she mm -hmm. because belongs to Lucknow. And mm -hmm. this husband then has his carter changed to Bihar. He's from Bihar. And that is also allegorical. And eventually uh, his minister dies and she one day is in Patna and goes to meet her. And she tells him that uh, my money has been swindled by your husband. I'm sorry, I have revealed the 80% uh, of the plot. Uh, the mother has been jailed by uh, Edgar Hoover. She returns to America and uh, McCarthy, the, those are the McCarthy days because she is influenced by communism because of Emmett Roy. So it's a it's a vast this, but uh, the 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 first uh, the first uh, this I'll I'll read. Coming home, she's returning from uh, she's returning from Kangra, and she writes. Sometimes you get down at the wrong station. She comes by train. You find uh, I was asked to write the this uh, initially. I was want you to write something. They said you must uh, move the story uh, through a. So I wrote this. Sometimes you get down at the wrong station. You find it is also the wrong night or worse. Wrong dream. It happens when time has not got its screws fixed right. Time never gets, a, never got a mechanical engineering degree from a reputed college. <laughs> Our auto mechanics do a better job as they steal hubcaps, the rear view mirrors, or the car itself. They are good at screwing. So are lawyers. But that's another world. Law courts, I mean, a metaphor in miasmal mist. How I love my alliterations, Mama. These are letters to Mama. So she mentioned, but these are otherwise uh, chapters in a novel written in first person. You need to be careful when you are tired. And I sure was. I had enjoyed it for a while as we sat close to dusk. We set out close to dusk. We moved out of the station, steel trappings and the foothills fanned out while trees and pylons slipped by. Failing twilight slowly chiseled away at the shrinking landscape. When it got dark, I watched the lighted geometries of our glass windows spill across the tracks and race back to nowhere. Yes, I was returning home, but things change. Time is the culprit again. It changes without notice. 
the damp on the window glass didn't let me see much. As the night tray grated to a halt, <coughs> I found myself disoriented. If you shout, where am I? Guys will look at you in an odd manner. You sense you are in a, some sort of trouble. I did. Damp on the window pane prevented me from seeing where I was. I told you. The dream didn't let me see beyond the eyelids. I seemed to have been everywhere. It had been something like a rim of the earth. Parikrama. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> when I got down, I had been fighting brush and bramble every yard in my hazy half dream. The steps leading to the overbridge were not a party. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm coughing. The monsoon rains are here. Sand doesn't lash Charbag anymore. The night moths hover around the platform lights. Urdu poets make a big deal of <coughs> Urdu poets make a big deal of Shama and Parvana, flame and moth, the male dying at the touch of the beloved's beauty. Let the bugger get his hands on her, and within five years of wedlock. He'll go for a mistress while she is having a third baby. So much for poetry, mm -hmm. uh, not getting love. The hills were better. I understood the language of the wind in the poplars. I knew a Himalayan thrush the moment I spotted its blue in the shrub. The night sky was sharper there. Star clusters spoke to you. Orion, Taurus, the bull with its horn, and of course the great bear, the only constellations I can read. This is the girl writing, huh, Seema? Oh, oh. Married. I'm calling her a girl. Isn't it a shame you have over two decades in the universe? You lived over two decades in the universe. She is over 20. And all you know of the skies is our three constellations. But I'm here. Lucknow is another language. I spotted Eka, Tonga, Tum Tum, call it what you will, a one horse carriage, the driver clicking his tongue to encourage the horse. There are no cycle rickshaws to be seen. Where is everybody? What has happened to the bloody place? I noticed that the Tonga driver has a skull cap and a mixed black and uh, white beard. Now, if we can only agree at this hour, Kaisar Bag, I shout. As I struggled, struggled with four other passengers, all equally desperate. Crowds and desperation are twin brothers. I feel too many people are in the country. We want less bums, torsos, legs. Sterilize the fellows. But philosophy has to take a back seat. You want to go home. 50 bucks, I shout, flashing the first notes I can scrape out of my purse. He lets me in, telling the others respectfully to wait. Doesn't allow el to elbow them out. Vanishing dregs of Lucknavi Tazib. You don't have to give me all that, he says. When I get down at home, he accepts only 35 and waits till I get my into my key into the lock. Always tricky business at night. The street light across the road has turned iridescent in the haze. I struggle and manage. That's the story of my life. Open the house. Locks click open now and then. Those spaces don't. I'm home. At night, I noticed that trains and the sound of trains ran through my mind on parallel tracks. One dream, two tracks. There, is, there are other things. There is the emergency, the president bathing in the bathroom, and the home minister coming with 
him to sign the i could read that but i i i would rather not uh, uh we could have some questions also if you feel yeah, like yeah. are there any yeah. other photographs there are photographs there were photographs of your travels keki would you like to say a few words about your travels mountains oh, uh, Greece, well, I traveled all over europe with my oh, yeah. with my car firstly uh, here i took them took my children and my wife uh, to the south uh, mm. i have been to sri lanka two or three times for poetry mm. uh, and then uh, from london uh, we took the car across to europe and toured europe uh, i wish i had another day uh, mm. i did see berlin but uh, the rest we went to uh, we didn't go to spain because we oh, were told that if you go to spain you will get lost there it's so so vast <laughs> and i went to spain again uh, when cordoba university called me and they called all the um, translators from madrid they translated my poetry i was told spanish poetry has no rhymes so i i chose Uh, poems which had no rhymes at all but the book never came out okay. though i went in 2007 with mamang dai mamang dai came out that is the cyrus okay. system that right. 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 and these right. are the, uh, there, there is mamang dai also here is the second one and these are the spanish translators who were oh. some from uh, cordoba university itself and uh, one or two from madrid as well Yes, and that is Avaros, Great Avaros, uh, his okay. statue at Cordoba. Okay. The, can we go further? Madhab, the next one, please. Yes. Sorry. Cyrus the uh, tomb of yes, Cyrus, Cyrus the Great. Persepolis and yes. that is Akshar Rustam, where uh, the bodies of the kings of Iran are. buried in those uh, rocks fortunately they have not been disturbed mm -hmm. and these are the things which are not there in pasargade they are mm -hmm. only there in this uh, right. pasargade has nothing but the uh, but the landscape mm -hmm. otherwise it was a beautiful beautiful city they say yes yes, yes. bhutan paro bhutan Yes, that is most probably Bhutan. Yes, 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 it is. Bhutan again, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the princess of, uh, princess of, Bhavnagar. Later on, princess of Panna. She married mm -hmm. Panna. Yes, next. Ah, that's at the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, yes. It's a very nice photograph. I'm rather proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> at the Sea of Galilee, uh, but where, is the, where is the photograph? Oh, yes, there it is, at the Sea of Galilee, and. Next, this is the chairs of the DSC Prize, the right. international right. jury where you had to read this, thousands of books. This slide has to change. Yes, because yeah, you're very far off. You can't be seen very well. Yes, that is at the DSC Prize. DSC Prize. Yes, yeah. and uh, I think that is I'm with. Talking with yes. in conversation with Amrita. <laughs> yes, that's right. For ancestral yes. affairs, for ancestral that is, affairs. At yes. the DSC, yes, prize event. Yes, 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 that's right. 2015. <laughs> how time passes. Yes, yes how time passes. This is the tenth year now of the DSC yes. prize. You, under you lockdown. Say, uh, Sorry. Uh, hmm. <laughs> ah, with Mala Shri Lal and. Uh, the lady who they yes, 
to Rina Narula. Prize, the, the DSC Prize. The DSC Prize, that's right, yes. Mala very... Narula Hassan. Yes. yes. And Mala has been a great supporter of mine. I am yes. very grateful to her. Yes, yes. Would you like to talk about your work with the Minorities Commission also? And uh, th there's a question related to that. I, uh, sorry, I butted in. Sorry, Amrita. No, no, I, no, no. I work like hell. I went mm. to every riot scene. Mm. I was there from 2011 to 2014. And mm. I uh, went to 10 riot scenes. You had uh, lots of riots during the Congress regime, if I may say so, the UPA. And now that the majoritarianism has swept over the country, there are no riots, fortunately. Mm -hmm. That's one good, one good thing uh, that comes out of majoritarianism. But that's the mm -hmm. only thing. Uh, and uh, I, whatever I could do, I did. And yeah. uh, there were glaring uh, equities. For example, oh. I was in Jaipur and uh, I said to the people there that this colony uh, has no, it was a Muslim colony mm -hmm. and it has no electricity, no water. And mm -hmm. they said it's an illegal colony. And uh, the people said, but there is an, another illegal colony of the uh, majority community and they have both Bijli and Pani. Mm. So these things also happen and we pointed oh, them yeah. out. Uh, oh, yeah. I went for a uh, for a riot in Rudrapur and I was walking, uh, a Muslim had been killed, a Hindu had been killed and the ATM was accompanying me and uh, uh, there was a whole rubbish and uh, drains were open and I said to the ADM why whether it's the Muslims house or the Hindus house mm -hmm. there were two drains. I said why can't you get the drains covered and cleaned up and he said sir they are illegal colonies but in mm -hmm. India I have built a brick I said in India nobody is going to uh, um, throw them out of those illegal colonies illegal colonies become legal but mm -hmm. uh, he was not willing to sanitize those those uh, by lanes mm -hmm. in any way. Yes. I remember that small incident. Mm -hmm. Heart wrenching, heart wrenching the situation at times. That is Munich. That is Munich, where I, I yes, uh, yes. this is Cornelia Zetche who yes. and Kaya, who. Uh, organized the whole thing and I am introdu being introduced and Pankaj Misra was also there and he was blaming the RNDW for the uh, for some of the riots and I said no that those are the militants from Pakistan and we had mm -hmm. a, a 40 minute uh, uh, exchange of views and mm -hmm. I didn't agree with him at all and uh, when the, the lady, the chairman, the chairperson stopped me and uh, uh, the, the crowd rose up and said, they said, no, we want him to speak. Uh, oh, after oh. That, I exceeded my time oh. and I told oh. them what Kashmir was all about. And in those days, they were, this is 2003 and oh. uh, the jihadis and the people who wanted independence for uh, Kashmir, uh, we we were fighting them as far as the security forces were concerned and thank god it uh, the the whole thing went down but mm -hmm. now there is another uh, i don't want to talk about kashmir at all yes absolutely absolutely the, uh, that is nirmal varma gagan gil uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. ananta Bhakti, yes. uh, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the other other people. I'm I'm so sorry. Ashok Mitran was there. Uh, but, uh, yes, he is here. He is here. Yes. And yes. Ramuthi, uh, yes. who has become a legend in Karnataka. Uh, hmm. 
Hmm. And that's me with uh, yes, yes. Nirmal Varma. And we have yeah, yeah. very tall glasses and we are made of wheat. <laughs> and the beer was white, absolutely, and not golden. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Ranjit Hoskote and yeah. Gagan. And Nir Nirmal yeah. Varma is. Nirmal so Varma. Yes. And that a is. Range of people, range of writers. Shakti Deshpande, Cornelia Zetshi, yes. and uh, Nirmal Varma. Nirmal Gagan. Varma. Yes. Nirmal yes. Varma. Yes, absolutely, that. absolutely. I think Katie, can we take up two questions? Can we take up two questions? Yes. Both are related in a way. One is by Dr. Shanaz Gama. Have you become more aware of your own personal identity over time? I remember that you said 35 shall years I, ago. Shall I take the first two questions? Two questions. And the second is by Dr. Jainti Said. It is rare for a writer to practice both poetry and prose fiction. Which do you find more challenging? Would you like to take both these questions uh, in a way related your identity as a writer? I, I uh, may I answer this last? <laughs> I find, uh, if I may say so, and hmm. with modesty, I, I hope you don't uh, accuse me of uh, being bumptious. <laughs> I find uh, prose a little, a little more difficult. Not the writing of it, not the narrating of it, but it. The prose, is, the prose means a lengthy process, and I, I, I can't work that hard now from this year <laughs> onwards. I, I find sitting at the laptop or the computer for a long time uh, is physically uh, not. Uh, is, is detrimental to me. Uh, as far as poetry, uh, police and poetry, I was in the police for just 11 years. Another five I spent in the SSB in the hills. So, okay. And so uh, the field work and in a life of say 80 years, uh, what is 15 years <laughs> or 11 years? So. Uh, the readers and the people, the audience must realize this and not point all the time. And don't forget that George Orwell was a policeman and was in the uh, was in the Burma. So uh, there's nothing odd to be uh, odd about the combination. And all of us have numerous personalities and numerous dimensions yes i am a little more uh, a little more conscious of being a being a parsi but uh, still a very uh, still fairly marginal despite those two books uh, which i have talked about the uh, the um, the ancestral affairs and fire altar fire altar came about because suni tarapur wala and I was supposed to do uh, uh, was supposed to do a book on the Parsis. Then I found I couldn't. And uh, Suni Tarapurwala, whom I just met once in London, uh, she withdrew from the book on her own. And then these thoughts stayed with me in London. And uh, I had carried my Herodotus with me. And Herodotus and the Shanama and uh, your upbringing. My father used to read from the Shanama to us brothers. And slowly the poems came out. And uh, they were, I finished them in 90, 1991 to 1993. Uh, also a visit to Iran. That also helped me, Shiraz. And then I thought no one would be interested in India. And I left, left it for almost 17 years. And then came that big conference in Bombay, uh, Zoroastrian World, Zoroastrian Conference. And I said, I must uh, uh, publish the book now. And I uh, told Kartika Nair, who was heading the uh, Harper Collins, a uh, great editor she was. I've been very lucky with some editors, Ravi Deyal, one, 
the Ravi Singh was put me on the map with my he asked he said let's write the contract right, right now and we went for the novel so that's Ravi Singh and Karthik and I have been lucky with my editors any other questions Mm, not many more. Not many more. So let me take this opportunity to thank you very much, sir, for a very, very interesting conversation. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Mahatab sitting in Spain. She put all the videos together, the photographs together. Thanks to Kritika. Thanks to Dr. Shanaz Kama for arranging it. And thanks to Parzor for making all of this available to everybody. Thank you. May I also thank Amrita Bhalla and uh, Shainaz Kama and Matta Berani and uh, Kritika for all the help, the GeoParsi and the, I, I believe this is being uh, telecast or whatever it is in the IIC, the IIC as well. Thank you very much. Yes. It's been enjoyable for me at least.